We as humans have a natural tendency to want to understand and organize the world around us. We also need to name things in order to be able to communicate about them. Welcome to the wonderful world of taxonomy! Hi everyone! Welcome to another episode of our Scientific Friday. I am Teacher Janelle and I am on a journey to understand the different things around us. Are you ready to join me on today's lesson? Come on! The biological world contains an incredible amount of diversity. Here are some examples. In order to communicate about these organisms and start to understand their relationships to one another, knowing their names is an important first step. For today's lesson, we will explore the world of taxonomy. In this topic, we will learn about the following. First, what is taxonomy? Second, how do we classify and group different organisms? And third, what does naming and classifying do to help the organisms? First, what is taxonomy? Taxonomy is the science of classification, naming, and describing species. Taxon in singular and taxa in plural means group of organisms to which any taxonomic name is applied, while nomi means distribution. Now that we know what taxonomy means, let's explore its history. The founding father of taxonomy is Carl von Linné, also known as Carolus Linnaeus back in the early 1700s. He grouped organisms based on similarities that they shared. This could be external or internal characters. Linnaeus took information from his investigations and those from others and put it all in one large document called Systema Naturae. He also consistently used a certain way of assigning names to species, which is a two-part specific epithet with genus and species. Let us now know how we can classify and group different species. Species are still named using binomial names or two names. Binomial name comprises the genus and species epithet. It is important to note that the name of a species must have these two parts. Most names are descriptive and Latinized, or in Greek forms, often to honor someone. For example, tomato. The scientific name of tomato is Solanum lycopersicum. Species were arranged in an ascending series of inclusive categories or taxa. Here are the taxonomic levels. Domain, Kingdom, Phylum, Class, Order, Family, Genus, and Species. In this classification scheme, only species is a real category. The species is the basic unit of classification. They are the only real unit. The higher taxa are purely mythical creations to help us understand relationships between organisms and sometimes change as our knowledge of the group increases. On the present day of classification, we understand the world differently than in the time of Linnaeus. Specifically, we know how evolution has shaped the origin of new species. We also have a wider variety of characteristics to use to classify organisms. Genetic characters have largely changed the face of the science of classification and given us to focus on systematics, thinking about evolutionary relationships to classify organisms into groups and examine their relatedness. Also, the use of molecular information and focus on evolution has led some to conclude that groupings above genus and species are suspect and not useful. Traits may be similar due to ancestry and relatedness. But traits may also be similar when organisms respond to the same environmental pressures in the same way through time. Taking a further look into what makes organisms similar or not, 
the use of evolution as a basis for taxonomy, and a review of evolutionary theory is helpful here. It is Darwin's and Wallace's basic formulation of evolution by natural selection, the most familiar pathway to evolution. One of the most important things to note about evolution is that populations evolved. Individuals don't. Survival of the fetus doesn't quite capture evolution by natural selection. Either the key is reproduction, not just survival. With a background of evolutionary theory, how do modern-day taxonomists work to classify organisms? The kinds of traits they look for are those that are both shared and derived. These traits are also referred to as apomorphic. Its opposite is plesiomorphic. These useful traits are put together into branching diagrams similar to a family tree, essentially in the most simple way possible. Taxonomy took on a new role. It was also used to reflect evolutionary relationships. Systematics is determining phylogeny of a species, and phylogeny is that each species is included in a hierarchy of classification. Each level of the hierarchy is more general than the one below. Each level is what we call a taxon. Just like with classification in general, Determining species has become less straightforward with our ability to use molecular characters. These two species concepts or ways to define and identify species are still the subject of scientific debate. The biological species concept is more appealing because it seems to be more what the animals are telling us. However, it is not as firmly based in evolutionary theory and it is difficult to tell if groups are truly isolated reproductively in the field. The phylogenetic species concept, although relying on patterns of genetic relatedness, can lead to many groups being identified as separate species. The biological relevance of these groups can be questionable. Phylogenetic trees have long been used to picture relationships. Note that the cladogram does not show the exact pattern of ancestry and that the phylogenetic tree includes a hypothetical ancestor and a hypothetical descendant. By now, you may be wondering if this taxonomy stuff has an application to conservation. What does all of that naming and classifying do to help the organisms? It is important to know that understanding what is there is an integral part of being able to protect and sustain it. Think about how evolutionary processes have shaped the structure, life history, and behavior of organisms. Use your powers of observation to look for patterns, similarities, and differences in the natural world. Now that you have some background in taxonomy, take this understanding into future learning sessions and especially outdoors, to enrich your appreciation and ability to protect our unique natural resources. I hope you learned a lot today and apply these learnings in your daily lives. Still, this is Teacher Janelle. Like this video and turn on the notification bell to hear more from me and other teachers at Teacher Vibal soon. Join me again for our next Scientific Friday and together, let us discover things around us because science is everywhere. Goodbye, everyone!